So in this little video I'm going to show you how to make the final square for your patchwork cushion project, the honeycomb stitch square. We have the garter stitch border and then in the middle we have this panel of honeycomb stitch. So let's look at how to do that. I've already cast on and worked my first one to four rows of garter stitch so I'm now ready to begin row five. So the pattern tells me to knit four And then it says WYIF, which means with yarn in front. It's sitting at the back at the moment because I've been doing knit stitches, so I need to bring it to the front. So I bring it through the middle of the two needles, and now it's sitting at the front. It then says slip three purlwise. So I, I need to simply lift them from my left needle to my right needle by slipping them. So as if I'm going to do a purl stitch, don't work the purl, but just slip it off. One two, three. So I've now slipped my stitches from the left needle to the right needle. I now need to knit one. So I take my needle, my yarn through the middle and then I'm ready to knit one. It looks like I've been a bit clumsy there because you can see the yarn is going across the front of the knitting but that's actually part of the stitch effect you'll see later on in the pattern. So let's do that again three times. So bring the yarn to the front, slip three stitches purlwise, take the yarn to the back and knit one. Let's do that again. Yarn to the front, slip three, knit one and the final time yarn to the front slip three, knit one. And then to finish that row I just need to knit three. So let's just see what we've done. Lying it down you can see we've got the border on either side and then across the middle we have created four loose strands. Now working on row six. This is quite a simple row and you'll find it keeps being repeated all the way through the pattern. It's quite a nice familiar row to come to. So this is on the wrong side, knit three and then purl 17. So basically you need to purl all the way across the back of your work. You don't really need to count because you just purl all the way across until you have three left at the end when you need to remember to knit. So these are all purl stitches all the way across and then when you come to the end of your last three stop take the yarn to the front ready to purl I'm sorry ready to knit and you're ready to finish that row six so turning around I'm now ready to begin row seven which is the same as row five so we just need to repeat what we did in row five. Knit four and then take our yarn to the front, slip, knit one and repeat across the row. Slip three, knit one. As I bring the yarn across the front I'm trying not to make it too tight so I'm just keeping those strands across the front quite straight. So I'll do that again. So slip three and then here just take them to the back in a straight line so you're not pinching the knitting. And then finally knit three at the end. And then you'll turn your knitting and you'll see that row eight is the same as row six. So we're just repeating what we've already done. So it's that familiar row, row knit three and then purl 17 all the way across the back. This, this pattern does repeat a lot um, but I would recommend that as you're working through it you tick off each row as you go because it is a little bit complicated if you don't quite remember where you are so 
each row I would tick off when I finished. So taking it to the end of row 8, knit 3 at the end and then I'm ready to do row 9. This is quite an interesting row because it's now using those double strands that we've made in the previous rows. So row 9 begins with knit 5 and then it tells us to knit one under loose strands. So what we need to do with that is with the tip of my right needle I'm going to go behind the two loose strands so they're lying over the top of my right hand needle. I'm now going to start knitting the next stitch on my left needle and take it behind those loose strands before I take it off the needle. I'll do that again. So first of all I have to knit three stitches until I get to my next loose strands. So let's do that again. With my right hand needle lift the next two loose strands, start knitting the next stitch but before I take it off go behind the loose strands before I take this stitch off onto the right hand needle. Let's do that again. Knit three then behind the loose strands, knit one, and then take that behind those loose strands before I take it off. So you can see what's happening is that the strands that we created earlier are now being lifted with the knit stitch that we're making on this row. So let's do that one more time. So I'm going to just take my right needle behind those loose strand, knit the next stitch, bringing it behind the loose strands before I take it off the needle. Then knit three to finish the pattern and at the end of the row it just says knit two. So if I just lay that down you can see what's happened is that the loose strands that we created earlier and now have been lifted with those knit stitches. Let's look at it from here and you can see it more clearly. So it's along here, this is the row we've just done and we've had those loose loops which have now been lifted with those with that stitch effect of one knit one ULS. So that's the end of row 9. Now turning round, row 10 is that familiar row, it's the same as row 6. So it's knit three and then purl 17 all the way across. So I'm just going to show you at the end of this the next row, row 11, because although it is similar to the one we did earlier, row five, we have to do something slightly different at the beginning of the row. So this is taking me to the end of row 10. Turning around, we're now ready to do row 11. So it begins with knit three. And this time it says with yarn in front. So I bring that to the front and I'm only now going to slip two purl wise one, two, and then knit one. Now you see the asterisk, so now you've got to follow just from the asterisk, slip yarn to the front, slip now three purlwise, as we did before, knit one, and it says repeat from asterisk twice more, so I need to do that twice more. Once, Let's do that again, twice, and now I need to follow the pattern again with yarn in front, just slip two and then knit to the end of the row. So it's a little bit different that row to the first time we did that. 
but if I just lay it down what we've created then is we have our border edge and this time we've got five strands going across our central panel two shorter ones on either side and then three longer strands in the middle so we continue working through the pattern there are quite a lot of rows to work through we have to repeat the rows 5 to 16 once more and then rows 5 to 10 again and then when we've done that we are ready to begin the border and complete the square and cast off. <laughs>